find the maid wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the, the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Father God, we, on this very special day, on this day that we call many things, we call it the birth of Christ, we call it the Christmas event, and we call it the Christmas experience. Whatever it is, Father God, as long as it brings us closer to you, for we lift up our eyes into the hills from which cometh our help, and our help cometh from the Lord, which hath made heaven and earth. So it is on this Sunday morning, on this Christmas day, we say happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday. As we gather before you this morning, Father God, we are steeped in thanksgiving, we are steeped in reverence and humility. For you, Father God, are the rock of our salvation. You have been and continue to be the center of our joy and the source of all things eternal. God, now we ask you to go into the world, Father God. Bless all of those who are in need this morning. Bless those who have been marginalized. Bless those who have their backs against the wall. We ask your special healing, Father God, for the members of this church who are being physically challenged this morning. You know who they are, Father God. Wherever they may be, reach out and touch them on this Christmas Sunday. Bless them and keep them. Nourish them. Heal them where they may be weak. Mend them where they may be broken. Father God, may your mercy, may your grace lace all of us on this Christmas day. So Father, we kneel in our hearts, our hands together as one, praying that the Holy Spirit will fall down upon all of us this morning. Lord, we therefore open the breach of our hearts and our minds and clear away the debris of worldly matters as we join together in kingdom praise this morning. For those who are here, those who are not here, all of our members, all of our second shut and all of our offices, all of the pastors and preachers in the community, all of those things which give you glory, Father God, in the world today, churches everywhere, of every denomination, of every pretense, the good, the bad, everyone on this day bow before you, Father God, be it in person or with our hearts. We're asking you this morning, Father God, for those who, 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 who feel frustrated because they couldn't go out and buy something that is not about that. Pull down every demonic stronghold that stands in the way of the progress of truth. Pull down every demonic stronghold, Father God, that stands in the way of transparency. Lord, this morning we ask you to uphold us in your righteousness. Lift us above our transgressions. Lift us above our mistakes and our present circumstances that we may focus entirely on you today. For Lord, we desire not only to give you the glory but to be the evidence of that glory. Father, we may ask that you keep and bless our bishop this morning and missionary supervisor. Wrap your arms around them, Father God, that they may continue the vision for this Episcopal district. Bless all of the pastors, all of the presiding elders who are gathered this morning, Father God. Bless us as we continue this service outside in the parking lot, being a blessing to those who have been marginalized, those who are in need this morning. Bless those members, those officers, those presidents, those who are over the ministries to administer the service. 
Bless and keep all of us. And Lord, those who are suffering this morning, those who are suffering from loss, we know, Lord, that you can mend the hearts left torn. Send out your search party and encamp your angels around them. Comfort them where they, they, they are weak. Draw them near, embrace them with love and your comforting spirit. To all of you at home who are gathered around the Christmas tree, those that the children who have opened gifts this morning, those of you who are witnessing the joy of your family, the love of your family, we pray for you, asking God to continue to be a blessing in your life. So Father God, we pray that the leadership and the members, the officers who have been summoned and who are here today, that their labor may not be in vain. Help us to remain in alignment with our assignment and that our commitment to serve you be a watermark of our character. Help us to be fueled by faith instead of fear. We thank you for every mountain and every valley every crooked road that leads to you. Give us supernatural strength to discern the difference between trouble caused by the enemy and self-inflicted cause by the enemy. <clears throat> now bless this gathering this morning. Do not let us leave out the same way we came in. Help us to be transformed on this Christmas day and that our hearts may be renewed as we approach the new year. And when our time has come, Father God, please prepare a place for us where Job declared the wicked shall continue and the cease from troubling, and the weary shall be at rest, and the Sabbath will never end. We ask this prayer in the precious name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Again, it is good to be in the house one more time. Good to see all of you who have come out this morning. Amen? Amen. Yes, it's cold outside. <laughs> we have to sometimes just state the obvious. So I'm extremely proud of you, especially the ones who got up this morning and decided to come out on Christmas morning. Amen? Amen. I, I, I knew that I had a faithful remnant that would, would be here this morning, but even I understood if, if they decided not to come. I was prepared with my iPhone to do this thing by myself. I knew that my, my preacher steward would be here and my administrative assistant would be here then without fail and certainly my leader leaders and the tech team. So I'm, I'm just uh, grateful uh, that, uh, that you didn't consider it robbery to be with us today on this very special day. I think wherever there is a house Lord opened this morning, whatever sermon that may be preached, all of them can be titled A Reason for the Season. There's not much nuance in what takes place on Christmas Day. It's one of those major holidays when there are standard guidelines that we follow. On this day, I want to do something a little different. I want to really get down and deal with the bones of Christmas. I'm not going to be long. What it really means. What it is saying to us. How we should respond to this day. How we can be generational in our passing down. What this day truly means. The same way that our great-great-grandparents passed it down to our grandparents, the way our grandparents passed it down to our parents, the way that your parents passed it down to you. Seems like those days have gone, lost 
with many other things in the pandemic, but God is truly good and he is with us. So this morning, I want to lift up this verse. The scripture has been read for you, Mary. It was taken from the Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. I think I read most of that second chapter, verses 1 through 15. But these words I want to resonate with you this morning, resonate with those who are watching found in the 12th verse. Luke, the second chapter, the 12th verse. And thus saith the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. I want to lift up this subject this morning. When was Jesus born in you? When was Jesus born in you? I'm going to ask my preacher Stuart, or even Brenda at this particular point. Preacher Stuart, would you do me a favor? Okay. 
customer experience to come through. It becomes real when you take it up to yourself. When it is received, conceived, and believed. Verse 15 tells us, let us go down to Bethlehem and see this thing. This is what the shepherds were saying. Let us go. Now paraphrase for ourselves now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place. This is what the shepherds said after the angels had left them. You see, my brothers and sisters, it wasn't enough for the shepherds to hear the good news. It wasn't enough for them to receive it. When the angel announced unto you a child is born, it became personal for them. Just like Christmas has to become personal to us. That means that the shepherds desired to be a part of the Christmas experience. It wasn't just a matter of the boy finding Jesus. The way that the, 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 way that the angels exposed them to, to the Son of God, it, it, it became personal. This meant more so that they wanted to be a part of it. means that they had the desire in their hearts. It was more than just following the sign and heeding uh, the evidence of where they were crying Christ. They viewed this as a divine calling on their lives. Up to you, a child was born. We have to learn to take Christmas unto ourselves if it's to mean anything. Christmas has to be more than December 25th. Because in order for December 25th to be relevant in our lives, December 25th has to be every day of our lives. Christmas is a call. And like the shepherds, we have to see. Somewhere I read, but he, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Christmas has never been about what you get, it has always been about what you get. You have to give something up if you want Christmas to be personal. The shepherds left their fields, left their families, left their responsibilities, and went from the event of Jesus' birth to the experience of his birth. Christmas can never be personal if we don't move from the celebration of Christmas, to the realization of Christmas. The shepherds made Christmas personal when they received it, conceived it, and believed it. In order to experience the authority of God's love, the vastness of His grace, and the immensity of His character, we have to make Christmas our own. Second, secondly, we, we notice in the text that it didn't say that Jesus was lost. It said he had to be found. So listen to the text. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the man. You shall find. Then say it's lost. If, if you want it in your life, you have to find it. As I said before, all of us knows what it's like to search for something. Lost my keys this morning. Man. Just earlier today, we were running around trying to find the fire so that we could unfreeze the lock. Some of you may have left your wallets, lost your wallets in the house. You may have been looking for a long receipt, all of us know what it means to serve for someone. Well, when we find them, 
They were exactly where they are. <laughs> they were exactly where we left. Waiting for us to fight them. Well, this morning, my mom was done. Jesus wants to be found. The text says you will find the baby around his father. They were strips of cloth 
that they would wrap around their body so that on their journeys, if something should happen, they should become wounded or if they die, that same cloth would then be wrapped around their entire bodies. So what you have is a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. We say, Pastor, here's the baby that they were preparing at birth or death. He was wrapped in death clothes so that we could have eternal life. It's amazing how much time we spend getting ready for the celebration of Christmas and how little time we spend on the invitation to meet Jesus. You come here today, God, because we know we have to. You're not here today because we have to. We can get it closer to do that. Do that. We didn't come here. We didn't have to come here dressed up today. We came here today not because we feel guilty about being in church, and not because of who we are, but rather whose we are. By our presence here today, my brothers and sisters, we are telling the world that we've been to Bethlehem and seen this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Let us not spend or waste our hours preparing for our celebration of holiday if you think you're important. But let us spend our time preparing for Christ. On Christmas we talk about a baby being born, but the scriptures talk about a baby being found. Christ wants to be found by each and every one of us. The text said, we will find them wrapped, not in Christmas paper, but only God's. Truth is, he can't be born unless he's born in us. The shepherds, the shepherds traveled from the fields, went to a stable for a bird and walked away from the bird day. Today the world says Merry Christmas, but I say to you this morning, Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to the Chief Cornerstone. Happy Birthday to the Hidden Treasure. Happy Birthday to the Living Bread. To the Shore Foundation. Happy Birthday to the Great Physician. Happy Birthday to the Master Teacher. To the Lord of the Harvest, to the Lily of the Fields. Happy Birthday to the Rock of Ages. Continue to see him. And the question that we should all be asking is not when Jesus was born on this day, but on what day was he born in us? Let us know. Verse of the Father, we thank you for your word this morning. May it fall on the heart of those who are in search of you. Continue to be a present light in their lives. Continue to bless us as we move forward. Let every day be a Christmas day. For every day is about you. We continue to ask your blessings again for our sick and our shame. Continue as to watch over us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 And ask all of those who are watching on our Facebook page and here as we so it comes. Please send your donation. Again, the church is in need of your, your blessings. Make a check to Clemson Memorial and Zion Church, 151 Broadway, Newark, New Jersey, 07104. We thank you for your cheap, cheap and giving and your daily filled with blessings. And your heart's filled with peace.
we'll see you again next Sunday. I'll be here. Hopefully you will be here. It's odd that Christian Paul was Sunday. I don't think I've ever remembered him doing so much. And we'll follow up on New Year's on a on Sunday as well. But God is good. We rain down upon you and keep his hands on us. And I'm praying that he will keep his hands on you. Amen. 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 I know that Brother Bill Briggs, who was part of our outreach committee along with the East West, will be in the parking lot. I'll be there. Some of you will be there uh, to give out uh, bread and go bags and produce starting at 12 o'clock. So have a wonderful day. Can you participate? Come back. Stay. I'll be here. God bless you. Let us do the benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee.